that you can't get over it. But what I am asserting is that you can't just get over it. it something can't happen to you today, and then by the end of the week, if it was traumatic, I'm just, all right, I'm cool. I'm over it. No. I mean, you can say that, but A, you'd probably be in denial, and two, you're probably lying to yourself. And then I, I share this because, again, those of us who are in the field, or even not in the field, who are been um, in contact with someone who's experienced trauma, and particularly complex trauma, they have to get it. They have to understand, listen, this person experienced trauma, it actually affected the whole body. It affects the way that their brain functions. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Gotta get that. So no, I mean, people who say you can just get over it, or you should just get over it, I would say are unknowledgeable. Yes, ma'am. So really, um, you were the trauma, you were the trauma, you were the trauma, uh, I mean, dealing with it inwardly, you were the cause of physical or illness in your body. Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. You can. By not sharing it or just having to deal with it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Trauma period can. Right. So, you like, so is it like a certain trauma or trauma is trauma? Is it like trauma is trauma. You know what I mean? But there is something called complex trauma. The complex trauma is something that keeps reoccurring over and over again. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, what I can say is, within the recent years, I think that the black community has um, educated themselves in terms of mental health illness. I, I know growing up and years ago, matter of fact, I'm going to share something in a minute, but um, years ago, you would, people would say, um, I got bad nerves. You ever hear that? Yeah. I got bad nerves, or I'm hyper, yeah. or, um, you know, your problem with you, you ain't praying enough. That's why you're going through all this, you know? Um, but it was taboo in the black community, mental illness, it definitely it definitely was. Um, and I can share this, I when I graduated from high school, I went to Mercier's Preparatory School, and you know, I graduated pretty, you know, with a high GPA, so I went in front of the board to get this scholarship. <laughs> I'll never forget this. Um, and I always knew that I wanted to help people, maybe be a, psychologist and so my major was psychology and I went in front of the board three black women and um, one of them says to me we would like to give you the scholarship but we are hesitating to give you the scholarship because of your major and I said to them puzzled and I said I don't understand and what she said to me is because you're not going to serve the community you'll be serving majority of Caucasian people. And I remember, I'll never get this, I remember getting in my car, going home, and I bawled my eyes out to my mom because I'm like, I'm not going to get a scholarship because they don't like my major. You know, and my mom encouraged me. Mom, well, the good news is that they eventually gave me a scholarship, probably not as much as I would like to have gotten, but they gave me something. But that spoke to the ignorance of, of you know, mental illness and how it plagues the black community. I mean, and I'm gonna speak as a minority woman, there's a there's a double minority status and the things that we have to go through, we, we even know it's, even, it's happening right now. Yeah. We can't drive down the street without fear of being stopped. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. I'm sure experience, like two years ago, I was pulled over um, and it took four cars to pull me over. Pull on me. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the fear is real. It's real. Yeah. The Lord help us all that are, you know, um, raising 
young black men. So that's traumatic in and of itself. I don't get to walk through stores sometimes freely without somebody following me. I don't get to get pulled over and rip up the ticket and act a fool <laughs> to some of the cops. Do you know what I mean? And we've seen time over time again, and I will move past this, but you know, I was just seeing, I try not to be on social media, but I saw a little boy, the police were called on because he was mowing the lawn. He got his little you know, lawnmower and he must have mowed a little bit of um, his neighbor's property line, so she called the cops on Imagine what's being portrayed in the media and how that little boy might have felt. He was just trying to help everybody out. I know I don't want to mow my lawn. You know what I mean? Any other questions? Is that some questions? Mm -hmm. Is that questions? Mm -hmm. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Do you still think about pain uh, that you've been through? Well, the first step is the fact that you're not in denial. So you acknowledge the fact uh, that you think about, but are you honest with how you feel about it? Are you sad? Are you depressed? Are, do you, are you honest with your feelings about what has happened or the loss that you endured? You know what I mean? That's the first thing. The second thing is, do you hold that inside or are you, do you have a support system? Do you have a resource? Because again, like I said, how you feel is how you feel. Okay? And I'm not sitting here up here saying like you can't think about, you know, the thing bad things that happened to you. But I will what I will say in terms of healing, replaying the trauma over and over and over again in your brain about what has occurred or what offense has been done to you is like self abuse. It's like self abuse because it becomes your idol. That's all you think about. Do you know what I mean? So I would say, you know, get a support system. Talk about it. Talk about get a trained professional coach or you know a therapist who can help you process some of those feelings and help validate your feelings and what you how you feel. You know, and me personally, you know, of course I'm a therapist and they say therapists have therapists, but my number one therapist is God. To be honest with you, you know, and I'm people may not agree with that. There's people that you know I've seen that don't have that belief. But I'll, I'll never stop saying that that's one thing that has worked. Yes, ma'am. So, you talked about the trauma. Have you known people that have lost trauma and they had started having seizures? Not the. Mm -hmm. But it's like a silent seizure. Yeah, so when we talk about the brain and the physical changes of it, and how it changes, you know what I mean, certain parts. You know, you lose some neurons in your brain, you know, that controls certain functions of the brain. So I haven't personally known anybody that's done that, but I've heard that that is possible. It's a real thing, folks. It really is. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned what helps you get through is God. Mm -hmm. um, and a support system. And a support system. Um, with you being a, a therapist, mm -hmm. um, do you think it's a little bit easier for people to recover if they do have some sort of sense of spirituality? Or do you find that, is, is that like a, a major writing factor in well, um, There's no right or wrong answer to this. This is personal experience in, in, in whatever. Um, it has been my experience that those who have a higher power that they um, can turn to as a resource have taken the journey to heal. Okay. So again, I mean, if we're talking about personal, you know, for me, absolutely. Well, I would be standing here for days 
and then have a deep, you know what I mean, to God. Any other questions? Any comments? Thank you for coming. I mean, that's just, I honestly did not know